Negative. Aha. All right. <laughs> wake everyone up. I, well, first, good evening. Um, and then let's just start over again. The board meeting of April 27, 2021 is called to order. Member Perez will now lead us in a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Member Perez. I would like to read a quote for all these incredible students this evening. One of the greatest experiences in life is achieving personal goals that others said would be impossible to attain. Be proud of your success and share your stories with others. That's a quote from Robert Cheek. Now please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Thank you, Member Perez. <clears throat> Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of Member, oh, sorry. Good evening, Member Snively. She just kinda, oh, she's uh, maybe on the track and field team here. She's doing her fast walk. Uh, and Member Hahn will, will not be present tonight. Um, <clears throat> board members, I would like to go over the format of tonight's meeting, tonight, yeah, tonight. We are permitting up to 50 people to be present in this room. Given the size and orientation of the room, we can do this safely. Members of the public may sit in every third seat in this room. The public is reminded that as part of the district's reopening plan approved by the Florida Department of Education, face coverings are required to be worn at all district sites, including the ISC. Those not wearing a face covering will be asked to wear one and will be provided with one if they do not have one. Should someone, after being asked, refuse to comply, they will be asked to leave the premises. 
Member Perez will now read the board guidelines. As we begin this afternoon's meeting, let me quickly review the format of our board school board meetings. Please silence all electronic devices. At recognition meetings, we recognize our students, teachers, schools, community partnerships, among others, but we will not be approving items of business. <clears throat> Keep in mind that the staff has worked hard trying to keep a tight schedule so that this meeting flows smoothly and concludes timely. Board members, please keep your comments brief. The meeting will adjourn after the last recognition. If any of you would like to photograph the students, please feel free to come up. Thank you. Yes, and, and also um, we do have a photographer here who will gladly take photos of your, of the students, of course, and um, perhaps some significant others, their family members as well. Um, Superintendent Davis will also say congratulations upon each of the entries receiving their well-deserved recognition. Uh, Larry Plank, Executive Director, of Science Education, will be highlighting this recognition. I almost thought you were part of the script, but. No. <laughs> so uh, I want to welcome Larry Plank. Okay. I just want to say, first of all, it's a pleasure to be back. So thank you for providing us this opportunity to share the wonderful work of our students. Um, so Madam Chair, Honorable School Board Members, Superintendent Davis and staff, uh, the Sunshine State Scholars Program provides an opportunity for districts in Florida to showcase student performance of their junior students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The selection criteria for the Sunshine State Scholars include the following. Overall student grade point average, both weighted and unweighted. Uh, SAT and ACT scores, the number of advanced placement STEM courses completed, the number of advanced placement STEM assessments with a score of three or higher, participation in STEM competitions, and participation in extracurricular related activities such as clubs and student organizations. District scholars will be recognized for their academic achievements in June on the 28th and 29th in Orlando, where they will have the opportunity to meet industry leaders from STEM-centric companies, as well as representatives from all of Florida's public institutions, those universities and colleges. We are aware that each of these students have had excellent educational opportunities provided to them by their teachers and their administrators, as well as excellent coaching and support from loved ones at home, including their parents. I would now like to honor the parents, family members, teachers, and administrators of our three Sunshine State Scholars. You know who you are, so please stand up to be recognized. Our first Sunshine State Scholar is Fatima Ashour, 11th grader from Leto High School. Parents are Salim Ashour and Jamelia Imlukatar. Is Fatima with us tonight? Please come up to be recognized. The principal of Leto High School is Larissa McCoy. Our next Sunshine State Scholar, go ahead and stand right in front. We're gonna get a picture with all three of you. Is Cody Baskill, 11th grade at Newsom High School. Parents, Ashley and John Baskill. Cody. <laughs> Principal Katie Rocha. Our last Sunshine State Scholar, Vivian Rowe, 11th grade at Steinbrenner High School. Parents, uh, Shumain Mao and Trika Nin. Vivian, if you're here, please come forward. And principal at Steinbrenner High School, Tiffany Ewell. So we have our two Sunshine State Scholars. I do want to note that all three of our Sunshine State Scholars were awarded in their schools with all of their medals and certificates. Uh, so congratulations on those ceremonies. And we would love to have your photographs of family members. If you would like to come to be a part of that and from the school board, please do.
<laughs> Come on up. <laughs> Do you want them all in front? Yeah. If you guys want to come back up. <laughs> Laura, do you want another photo? Another photo? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, stand behind. Congratulations, students. <clears throat> Next, <clears throat> Larry Plank will now be highlighting the science education recognition, and that will include the Tampa Bay Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, STEM, Network, Student, Space Flight Experiments Program, and the Mission Patch Competition uh, mission 15. So, uh, Mr. Plank. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to highlight this program as well. The Student Space Flight Experiments Program provides an opportunity for students in grades 5 through 8 to have their science experiment flown to the International Space Station uh, to be conducted there by astronauts with the re results sent back to Earth. So pretty exciting. Uh, in Hillsborough County, SSEP proposals were judged by a committee of local science leaders with the top three projects submitted to Washington, D.C., where a team of practicing scientists from the National Center for Earth and Space Science evaluated all of the proposals and selected a top experiment from our district to fly. This is our district's eighth year to launch a project to the International Space Station and we are now tied for the longest running projects to be sent to the ISS. For the mission patch competition, so our connection, uh, member Vaughn to STEAM, <laughs> Students in grades K through 8 created an artistic mission patch representing the space experiments program that will also fly into space as a part of the payload containing the experiment. The patch will eventually be returned to Earth as well, uh, along with the experiment, and the students will receive a certificate from NASA and SpaceX stating that their, their patch flew in space. Uh, these patches are currently on display at the Florida State Fair and in, in the Hillsborough County Public Schools exhibit. The Student Space Flight Experiments Program is supported by generous partners of the Tampa Bay STEM Network, which is led by Hillsborough County Public Schools, as well as our recent Department of Defense grant, totaling $2.93 million. I'm excited to say that through that grant funding, we are able to pay for uh, the SSEP program uh, for the next three years uh, without having to rely on district funding. So I know, Addison, that you're probably pretty happy about that one. <laughs> Uh, the student experiment and mission patches are currently scheduled to fly to the International Space Station on SpaceX Mission 23 in August of 2021. So it is first my great pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Nebi Salim Bakare, who is a National Board Certified Teacher and also Science Resource Teacher at Shihai Elementary School. Uh, Nebi will introduce her young scientists and at, ask each of them to share a little bit about their project. Nebi? All right, thank you. All right, Catherine Artia Valis, Moses Donaldson, and Brianda Obispo Polanco. And these are my wonderful students at Sheha Elementary. <laughs> and the project that they're sending to space is the effect of a microgravity environment on the germination rate and growth development of German chamomile seeds. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brianda and we chose this project because we were a part of the gardening club. We wanted to see how growing things in space could benefit astronauts. Hi, my name is Catherine, and the this research was important because 
Hi, my name is Catherine. This research is important because when astronauts grow their own crops, they don't need as many resupply missions. Astronauts can benefit from German camp. Astronauts can benefit from German chamomile because German chamomile is a medicinal herb and has many health benefits. Also, astronauts can enjoy a good cup of, ger of chamomile tea. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nebby. I would also like to thank Mary Vaughn of Randall Middle School uh, for serving as our district liaison to the SSCP program since its inception, as well as Nicole Tuminella, our district resource teacher uh, for the DOD grant, uh, for their work in making the program available for our students this year. I'll ask uh, Ms. Shauna Tirado, Elementary Science Supervisor, uh, to assist me in sharing more information about our mission patch winners. Shauna? Thank you. Celebrating the eighth year of integration of art and science, the Mission 15 patch competition was open to over 13,000 students representing 187 schools. The competition was divided into two categories, kindergarten through fifth grade, and sixth grade through eighth grade. We received 408 design submissions reflecting the spirit of SSEP and space exploration. The patches were judged by a committee of teachers and community leaders to identify a winner and finalists for each category. The kindergarten through fifth grade mission patch winner is Akshaj Nagamali from Deer Park Elementary. So he's gonna come forward with his artwork. So show that so everybody can see it. The other way, there we go. All right. Do a spin. Do a spin. <laughs> And the sixth through eighth grade mission patch winner is Miguel Garcia from Randall Middle School. So Miguel, you wanna come forward? Go ahead. Aren't those amazing? In addition to these phenomenal two winners, 10 elementary finalist patches and eight middle school finalist patches are on display at the Florida State Fair in the Florida Center. The integration of art and science has provided a unique opportunity for all students to be part of this project. Thank you. We do have some certificates for you as well. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we have the recognition of the winners of the 2021 Hillsborough Regional Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, STEM Fair, and participants of the 2021 State Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, and Mr. Plank, would you please highlight this recognition? Thank you. I'm happy to do so, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It is now my pleasure uh, to share with you tonight our five Best of Fair winners uh, and our State of Florida Science and Engineering Fair team. In normal years, the Regional STEM Fair is the largest academic competition that Hillsborough County offers uh, and is the single largest science and engineering fair in the state of Florida. It's usually held at the Tampa Convention Center with over 2,500 students in attendance and over 600 judges. So it's a pretty big event. We typically, with parents 
parents and students and everyone involved, siblings, uh, pass through about 14,000 individuals to the Tampa Convention Center through the three days of the fair. This year, however, uh, we had to pivot and we decided to do an online fair for our students and we utilized Flipgrid uh, for our student presentation and interaction with judges. Uh, this was no easy task, so I'd like to thank my extraordinary team and Terry for his support as well. Thank you, Terry, uh, for their work in making this happen, but also the district's IT team, uh, especially Holly Holland, who managed all of those like 980 or so video uploads from all of our students. So thank you, Holly. Uh, thank you, the IT team, but also thank you to the incredible teachers who assisted us in making the transition. Many of those those teachers assisted the students in getting those, those uh, videos uploaded, we wouldn't have been able to do the fair this year without you. I would also like to thank our fine board members, as well as Superintendent Davis and staff for their contribution to our online award ceremony. I know that we all heard a lot about your favorite moments from science, from your education days, which was very, very entertaining. Uh, if you've missed that uh, episode, it's still available on the Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. So we thank them for also videotaping and providing that opportunity to our community. So as a result of everyone's hard work, uh, this fair's uh, featured nearly 1,000 projects, as I shared, from over 2,000 students representing over 150 schools. In many cases, the students at our regional fair had already been selected as winners from their school site. Therefore, we consider all of our students who participated in this fair as winners. Every student participant in the regional fair received recognition for their efforts uh, on the broadcast, and they are also provided with collateral from our fair, which includes a commemorative STEM fair pin. Additional awards at the fair are given to first, second, and third place winners at each grade level and in each category, and special awards consisted of cash and prizes that were provided by individuals from the community, as well as our academic, business, and community partners in STEM, what we like to call our ABCs of STEM. One of our most important partners in STEM education is the Hillsborough Education Foundation. In addition to providing the regional STEM fair with logistical support, the foundation supports a variety of STEM-related grants to schools to afford students and teachers the opportunity to explore and experiment in ways impossible without such funding. This year's primary sponsor was Bristol Myers Squibb, who hosted each of our middle and high school finalists virtually prior to the State Science and Engineering Fair to practice presenting their research to the BMS employees and to learn more about the vast array of careers available in the BMS company. It is also important to note that while all of this cutting edge research is going on, particularly now in the age of the pandemic, and at places like Bristol Myers Squibb and Amgen, and in our institutions of higher learning, we are reliant upon scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians to answer these grand challenges that we face today, and also those that lie ahead. And for that purpose, the STEM fair serves uh, because our most valiant scientific efforts are taking place somewhere different than all of those institutions, and that are public schools, where the future ideas of scientists, doctors, and engineers are born and nurtured. For this reason, the fair represents not only the dedication of our area schools to STEM, but also future careers and our future economic stability and overall quality of life for everyone here here in the Tampa Bay region. In this process, we encourage parents to take an active role in their child's education. And the fair provides families with the opportunity to share ideas and work together to build students' esteem and reinforce positive attitudes towards science, engineering, and mathematics, something that lies at the center of academic success in science throughout school. And I think the parents in the room would actually also, also appreciate all the glue and the scissors and the things that they didn't have to buy this year because we didn't have to do the presentation boards. <laughs> Right, so you didn't have to do that. Um, so parents of all of our STEM fair representatives for our best of fair, as well as our state science and engineering team, I would like for all of you, as well as administrators and teachers, to please rise and be recognized for your support of our kids.
Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right, so each year we do recognize the Best of Fair winning projects, uh, one for each grade, third, fourth, and fifth, as well as a junior division award winner and a senior division award winner. Uh, the winning projects are selected by a committee of school district personnel, committee mem or community members, and STEM professionals. So our elementary Best of Fair winners do also receive a $250 check and one of these fine trophies that are sitting in front of us. The trophies do go in perpetuity, uh, so students' names are added to them and the student has the opportunity to share the trophy with family members for celebration and also put the trophy on exhibit at their school site. So our third grade best of fair winner from Lutz Elementary School is Olivia Skelton. Our fourth grade best of fair winner from Clark Elementary School is Landon Sheary. And our fifth grade Best of Fair winner from Gorey Elementary School is Cooper Lee. In the junior division, our Best of Fair winner is Tanishka Elgavi from Williams Middle Magnet School. And in the senior division from King High School, our best affair winner is Arko Ghosh. So I think we can do a picture with all of our best affair winners and their trophies. So kids, grab them. <laughs> They're happy to carry him. <laughs> get pictures, get pictures, get pictures. <laughs> can have your trophies. <laughs> Enjoy them. So in addition to our Best of Fair winners, uh, the winning projects from each category in middle and high school also have the opportunity to participate in the State Science and Engineering Fair to represent us as Team Hillsborough. This year's fair took place virtually where students competed with over 700 other students from around the state of Florida for cash and prizes valued at nearly $1 million. Our top three uh, high school students will also compete in the virtual International Science and Engineering Fair, which will be held in May, where they will compete against over 2,000 students from all 50 states and 80 countries. So the last portion of this, the STEM Fair award winners will be, be to bring um, our Hillsborough team up to the front. So a couple of students from Millen High School will be back with us. Our first uh, uh, award from Durant High School, uh, Sam Hesse, Kara Bush, and Jackson uh, Lashanga. They finished in first place in their category in our regional fair. From Middleton High School, <laughs> Chatinya Moya and Devanyi uh, Tangudu. And they finished first place in our, our regional fair as well in their category and also received special awards from the USF College of Behavioral Science and the Rob, Robert J. Matthews Memorial Award. Okay, 
Our third uh, winner is from Middleton High School as well, finishing first place in our regional fair. Also finished in second place at the state fair, Sharia Bergadada uh, from Middleton. All right, from King High School, uh, Hillsborough Regional STEM Fair first place. Also several special awards, including Women Geoscientist, the NASA Earth System Science Project Award, and the Clara Crumpton Memorial Award. Uh, they received, it, oh, I'm sorry, and also received uh, special awards from the Florida Association of Science Supervisors, and is also one of our three ICEF finalists. It's Anya Patadar from King High School. From Hillsborough High School, uh, Joshua Selvin finished first place in our regional fair and received honorable mention from the state fair. <laughs> from Durant High School, Hannah Burbage and Savannah Still uh, finished first place in their category in our regional fair and also received the, fo the following special awards. Um, the City of Tampa Water Department Award, so they had the opportunity to meet Mayor Castor and share uh, their project with the mayor. Uh, NOAA is taking the Pulse of the Planet Award, the U.S. The US uh, Stockholm Junior Water Prize Award, and the Dr. Carl Riggs Memorial Award. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, from King High School, Arco Ghosh, who's already been up here. Obviously first place in uh, his category, but also will represent us uh, at the International Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, received uh, the United States Air Force Outstanding Science Engineering Project Award, the Yale Science and Engineering uh, Association Most Outstanding Exhibit in STEM. Uh, finished first place in his division at the State Science and Engineering Fair, uh, and took home another big trophy, I, I suspect, right, from that fair that are just as big as ours, uh, and uh, was also then a Division Grand Award winner there at the State Fair. Congratulations. <laughs> Tushar Gona from King High School finished second place in the category locally, received the Mu Alpha Theta Award at the State Fair, finished in second place, and also received the special award from the United States Navy at the State Fair. Congratulations. From Hillsborough High School, Shalok Patel finished first place here locally at the Hillsborough Regional STEM Fair, received the Bristol Myers Squibb Innovation Award, uh, also at the State Science and Engineering Fair, finished second place in uh, the representative category, and will also represent Hillsborough County Public Schools at the International Science and Engineering Fair. Um, from Liberty Middle School, Madison Fang uh, finished first place in uh, the division here locally and then also received the American Psychological Association Achievement and Research Award locally and the USF College of Behavioral Scientists Award locally. At the State Science and Engineering Fair, finished in first place uh, in the representative division and also um, will receive the American Psychological Association and Broadcom Masters Award at the State Fair. So Madison will also then compete nationally in what would be the equivalent of the ISEF high school per, uh, a competition for middle school students at Broadcom Masters. So congratulations. <laughs> From uh, Benito Middle School, Lisa Meda finished first place in the division, third place in the state, and also received a Broadcom Masters invitation to compete nationally. Congratulations. From Liberty Middle School, uh, Rudra Patel finished first place locally um, and also second place at the state. Received additional awards uh, from the United States Metric Association, the United States Navy, Office of Naval Research, and will also represent us at Broadcom Masters. Congratulations. <laughs> from Williams Middle Magnet School, Tanisha Elgave 
Uh, first place, uh, obviously, the junior best affair uh, at the state level, finished in second in her division, and also received an invitation to participate in Broadcom Masters to represent us nationally. Congratulations. From Turner Bartels K-8, Makana Salim Uesi, finished first place locally, uh, received the Florida Aquarium Award, uh, received Zoo Tampa Lowry Park Engineering Award, congratulations, at the state level, finished in second, and also re received special awards at the state from the American uh, Society of Civil Engineers, the Florida Engineering Foundation, and Broadcom Masters, congratulations. And our last state finalist, uh, Daniel Pringle from Stewart Middle School, uh, finished first place locally and at the state level uh, won the Seminole County Science, Math, and Engineering Fair Award. Congratulations. All right. Oh, Cameron. I skipped over Cameron. How can I forget Cameron? <laughs> So Cameron Brown from uh, Rampello, right? I just skipped right over his name. I'm so sorry, Cameron. Uh, Cameron did have the opportunity also to meet Mayor Castor uh, for his award and finished in first place in his division. Cameron, thank you so much. Congratulations. Do we want to try to squeeze everyone in, maybe two rows and get a picture? I think that concludes this portion. Students, please grab a STEM fair program because you probably don't have a hard copy of that since we didn't meet in person. Take them home to your families. I would now ask that all of the families and individuals that are here for the first three awards to science and STEM, please exit room 102 so that we can make room for the next awards coming in. Thank you. Yay. He has 36, and then after that is 200. Okay, parents, while we're waiting, uh, not that I can provide entertainment, um, but next on the agenda are the Career, Technical, and Adult Education Competition Award recipients. Um, Mr. Jargo, let me know when I... 
I'm ready. Okay. All right. Oops. Okay, at this time, we will now have the recognition of the career, technical, and adult education competition award recipients. And Mr. Jargo, who is the director of career and technical education, will highlight this recognition. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Chair, school board members, superintendent, and staff. We appreciate the opportunity to recognize our career and technical education students as they participate in their activities and their career technical student organizations. We're going to start with our group from the future business leaders of America. And the first school we're going to be recognizing is Freedom High School, led by advisor Mr. Brian Nans. These are first place winners in the State of Florida competition. Let's acknowledge Brittany Pun, word processing first place winner. Also from Freedom, Sophia Murin, the business plan, first place state winner. Our FBLA students can stand to the to side there and when we get all of you together we'll uh, pause for a picture. Next up is our FBLA program from King High School, led by our advisor Ms. Deborah Mosley. For coding and programming, we have Aryan Srivasta, King High School. <laughs> Computer problem solving, Arko Ghosh. <laughs> Agribusiness, Balaji Iyer. <laughs> Computer game and simulation programming, Daniel Carvajal. Supply Chain Marketing, Satvik Vipaturi. <laughs> Computer Applications, Sithumi Rajapashki. <laughs> and a team from eBusiness, Siana Praveen, Shriya Komeni, and Caitlin Hartanto. Congratulations to all of our students from King High School. Next up, from Liberty Middle School, led by our advisor, Ms. Daisy Castell and Ms. Peroni, and supported by Principal Mr. Amirati. We have the Keyboarding Applications Middle School Champion, first place, Elena Lee. The FBLA Facts Middle School, first place, Rada Punchel. Next up, from Walker Middle School. This is supported by Ms. Hunziker, advisor, and principal Ms. Holloway. We have our first place in introduction to computer science and coding in the middle school level, Drew Harvey. <laughs> Next up, from Williams, we have Varun Gajar, Business Math and Financial Literacy, Middle Level. And we have Vivica Aurora, Business Etiquette, Middle Level. We have our principal, Ms. Blackwood Green, and one additional student here. I may not have got her name, if you'll come up and give it to me. I may not have checked that off on our list here. We'll let you announce it in yourself. What is it? Natra Vijay. That's Natra Vijay. Thank you. I thank you for supporting. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all of our students for future business leaders, correct? We're trying to, we have one more? Okay, come up here, come up here. Some of them were winning other awards, so we might have not been able to check them in. Come up here, please, and we'll say your name. Tell us all your name. Komal Brahminkar. And what did you win? Critical thinking. Congratulations. Como Broniker. Also from Williams, those last two students. So we just want to thank all of our future business leader students, families. If you'd like to take a picture before we move on, this would be a perfect time.
Somebody said that they saw my badge sitting there. I haven't seen it. Hi, everyone. Thank you for Thank you, everybody. You may take your seats. We will be moving on to some other career technical events, so if you need to, you may exit on the left-hand side of the room as we continue to some other career technical activities. Mr. Casey Giordano, are you here? Next up is a special recognition in career and technical. It is Casey Giordano from Bloomingdale High School. He is the lead student director for eSports District Competition. He's supported today by his assistant principal, Mr. Francis. And if you don't know, eSports is video game design competitions played online in a friendly manner, and it's become a wonderful way for students to socialize. And we're just so happy that you're uh, leading the advancement of this innovative industry. Me personally, I'm a big video game fan, so I appreciate the things that you're doing, and for years to come. It's going to be a great way to entertain and to educate as we continue into the future. So thank you for what you're doing, sir. If you have any family that would like to take a picture, this is a moment to do that. Next up, we have a special recognition for our Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps program, JROTC. I would like to welcome up Cadet Major Andrew Fisher of Newsom High School. Please come up to the stage. He is supported today by Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Army Eric Deal of Newsom High School. And of course, in all things, supported by our Director of Army Instruction, Colonel Sam Taylor. Recently, this student was selected as a cadet of the year in a ceremony just out here at Franklin High School, uh, excuse me, Franklin Middle School, Boys Preparatory Academy. And I'd like to share a couple of the accomplishments of this student that led to him being the cadet of the year. He served as the inspector general and the drill team captain this year. Led that team to a second place finish at the district drill meet and in state meets, they won four of their five competitions. He received the West Point Society General Norman Schwarzkopf Leadership Award, selected as a delegate for the American American Legion Boys State and Military Order of World Wars Youth Leadership Conference, the Brandon Civil Air Patrol Squadron Commander. He will be going to the United States Air Force Academy in the fall. Thank you so much for your time here in this program and being the Cadet of the Year, and this is an opportunity for a picture. We're now moving on to our Virtual Enterprise International, an entrepreneurship program at Jefferson High School. We'd like to welcome up some of the students participating who each have an actual position in this virtual company. So we'll start with the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer, Amari Harris. We'll bring up the Chief Financial Officer, Valeria Yepes. The Vice President of Finance is Tyler Matthews. They are part of the Succeeding Steps, Inc., and they are led by their teacher, Ms. Rochelle Stanfill. 
and they are supported by their administrator, Ms. Wasselkew. I'd like to also note that Amari Harris and Valeria Yepes went to the DECA State Conference. They won first place in financial services team decision making among many schools around the state. Congratulations, Jefferson High School. If anyone would like a picture, this is the time. Our final group today from Career and Technical will be the TSA, the Technology Student Association. We'll start with our Middleton High School chapter team who recently won first place. Let's bring up Colton Jensen. Joseph Juan. Nicholas Miguel. Milana, take Milana Tom. They are supported by Mr. Mead, their advisor. And we also have a student here who did a different event. We have Mr. Joseph Clay, the extemporaneous speech event, first place winner. We also have a wonderful TSA program at Turner Bartels K-8. We have some students here today. I want to announce that, of course, Mr. and Mrs. Bostic, our advisors are here today, along with our principal, Mr. Bugs. First up, Mr. Bostic's son, Nathaniel Bostic Jr. on the chapter team, he won first place. We have Luke Dostel, medical technology issues. And we also have someone I'd like to acknowledge. I heard her win something earlier in the STEM category. I've got three things that she won. She won chapter team, forensic technology, and technical design. Makana Salim Wizi. Thank you all for the Technology Students Association. Anyone here that did not get recognized for that, just in case? All right, now's a great time for pictures. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you all for your support of career and technical education. This concludes our presentation today. Thank you, Mr. Jargo. Great job. Great job, students. Okay, board members, next we will soon get into the middle school champions, uh, Florida High School Athletic Association, I believe. Lannis, are you ready? Oh, okay, you're ready. So let me do this formally. Oop. Means I have to put the glasses on. All right, uh, right now we will have a recognition of the 2020 2021 middle school champions and the 2020 2021 Florida High School Athletic Association state champions. And Mr. Lannis Robinson, the, the director of athletics, and I don't see Jennifer Burchill. Oh, Jennifer's there. Uh, Jennifer Burchill, assistant director of athletics, will be highlighting this recognition. Good evening. 
evening. Good evening, and, and thank you for having us here today. And I'm just going to tell you, we have quite a few number of student athletes to recognize here this evening. Uh, so thank you all for having this. Uh, obviously, this year of COVID and the pandemic, uh, it was a challenge for us to be able to have these uh, type of recognitions. So we're very appreciative of being able to pull it off. Another thank you is we just want to thank uh, members of the board, our superintendent, members of superintendent staff that have been supportive of us being able to try to get that sense of normalcy and, and the return of athletics. Obviously with um, taking some precautions, of course, but um, the opportunity to be able to have the student athletes uh, physically compete, work on their mental uh, approach to life and the game, and, and we just feel that, that the athletics is a positive in their lives and along with the addition of schools. So thank you all for all of that support. Without further ado, I want to recognize some students, however. And we have, like I said, quite a few, I think 234 total. But we're going to do it in a fashion in which it will seem as it, a little bit shorter than um, what it may seem. <laughs> with that being said, our first recognition, and we're going to start with our middle school students, and because of the, the change in the start of the school year and such, we did change the order of, of which sports went first. Track is, will be the first that we recognize, typically is our third sport of the year, but we did it first. So we were able to play with the schedule a little bit, manipulate it, uh, so that we could um, most effectively have a program that was safe and, and, and but beneficial to our student athletes. So we're starting with the track. And here to um, present or for the first presentation is our middle school girls track team champion. Uh, and this year that was at Martinez Middle School. And I would like to introduce uh, the principal, Mr. Toby Johnson, that will make some additional uh, introductions. Good afternoon, my name is Toby Johnson, principal at Bob Martinez Middle School. Thank you for having us here today. Um, congratulations to our girls track team. Coming up is uh, Coach Speltz, who helped coach this year, um, along with Lori Dietz, and he's gonna recognize our students. All right, first person we have is Berkeley Demeter. Brianna Hartley, Brooklyn Wiggins, Eden Driver, Katherine Williams, Christina Gauchinko, Morgan Hartley, and Natasha Woolley. Once you go to the for this sir. And we'd like to invite anyone that would like to take a picture at this time. Board members, if you all don't mind joining us, and Mr. Davis. Congratulations. Next, our boys county track champion. That team was from Tomlin Middle School. Here to make our formal introduction is the principal, Ms. Tracy Durrance. Good evening, and again, thank you for having us here. We're going to do this very quickly. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce our head boys track coach, Mr. David Horn. Thank you. Here's our 2020-21 boys track team. Number one, Seth Hogan. Caleb Campbell. Alex Tedder. Logan Teeden. Salvador Jeremio, Drew Cothran, and our captain, Alexander Trejo. This was our first boys track championship since 1994, so we're excited. And obviously it's pitcher time. Right. 
Congratulations. So we, we followed up track season with volleyball and flag football at the same time. So we're going to start with our volleyball champions. And this year's county champion in volleyball is also from Martinez Middle School. So we'll invite Mr. Toby Johnson back up. I want to call up Coach Moffitt. Um, he coached our girls volleyball team. All right, I'd like to start with uh, coaches that helped us out this year. Uh, Coach Aaron Mountain. Yeah. David Brancasio. And Alex Speltz. And a shout out to our student coach, Mallory Baruch. We'll start with our players that are here. <laughs> Thank you, Re Rebecca Tracer. I I've heard the rest of this list are out playing volleyball right now, so we'll go through it pretty quick here. Brianna Amick. Sarah Blockell, Luciana Canellas, Avery Durenches, Alina Jabawi, Juliana Mano, Olivia Martel, Isabella Mogridge, Isabella Pereira, Consuelo Pinella de los Reyes, Ava Reed, Gracie Skeens, Lexi Chop, Brooklyn Wiggins, and Yan Wen. Thank you. Go ahead and get that picture, Coach. Why don't we center ourselves? There you go. Congratulations. And as you all return to your seat, as you might imagine, they won the county championship probably because their girls are playing club volleyball, and that's why they're not here tonight. <clears throat> Next, uh, reminding you that we added boys volleyball a few years ago at the middle school level, and uh, the county champions this year, you're going to see our theme here. I will invite back from Tomlin Middle School, the principal, Ms. Tracy Durrance. And we are back again. So we would like to introduce, unfortunately, uh, let me backtrack. Our head coach could not be here tonight. So I have the privilege of announcing this wonderful group of young men as our volleyball champions. So we got Devon Allen, Seven Bragnato, Jacob Carlisle, Carball, Alex Carlisle, Chase Durrance, Siler Gideons, Seth Hogan, Salvador Jeromello, Benjamin Martin, Waylon Rogers, Parker Scott, and Logan Teton. Congratulations, boys. And at the same time we added boys volleyball, we added girls flag football. So our next, our next sport to be recognized as county champion is our girls flag football team. And that is the team from Wilson Middle School. And here to present is assistant principal Nicole Paradiso. Good 
Good evening. Thank you so much for having us here. I am so proud to introduce our athletes for flag football, our champion girls, Jada Baldwin, Taylor Green, Adelia Reinhardt, Reese Pittman, Caroline Korn, Georgia Underwood, Allison Martin, Maya Lee, Sydney Cockrell, Sarah Breen, Ashlyn Bell, Annabelle Ramirez, and Sadie Pierce. Our coach could not be here this evening, but we are very proud of our girls. Congratulations. Okay. Flag football. Boys. County champion. That is the team from Franklin Middle School. Here to introduce, make some introductions. We have assistant principal, Mr. Greg Hall. Good evening, everyone. My name is Greg Hall, assistant principal right next door at Franklin BPA. And I'd like to introduce to you our 2020-2021 back-to-back middle school boys flag football team and our coach, Mr. Jacob Bess. Thank you. Starting with our sixth graders, we have Breon Bryant, Trayvon Freeman, Going to our seventh grade players, Dante Keynes. And eighth graders, Santonio Isaac, Johnny Tyson, Sion Sheffield, and Kendrick Ford. Our other, some of our other players couldn't be here, but we want to congratulate everyone. Picture time. <laughs> Congratulations. Then after the winter break, we picked up with soccer, and we want to make the introduction and announcement of the middle school girls soccer champion, county champion this year. It was from Mulrennan Middle School. Here to make a presentation, assistant principal, Ms. Beverly Burnett. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to introduce to you all our Morenin girls soccer coach, Miss Christy Huther. She will come up at this time and she will do the introduction of our girls soccer team. You yeah. okay. All right, we have Emily Blair. And Carly Collins. Maya Yule. Jasmine Galaza, Samia Hajaz, Madison Hurley, Savina Ivy, Aliyah Jackson, Addison Kapuchiak is not here today, but Cheyenne Richter, Lexi Sklavakis, Madison Stahlbomber, Kayla Tellefson, Michaela Ulrich, K. 
Kendall Vision and Chris Wilson. Great job, ladies. Congratulations. And our final middle school team that we're going to recognize this evening is the boys county champion. And that is the team from Liberty Middle School. Here to make our introductions are, is the principal, Mr. Jimmy Amorati. Thank you. Good evening, board members, Superintendent Davis. It is my privilege to introduce Liberty Middle School's boys soccer coach, Mr. Gabe Rivera. Thank you, Mr. A. Um, so today we have the boys soccer team from Liberty. Um, first up, J.D. Amarati. Sanjay Bale. Ryan Drum, Chris Fabri, Leo Herber, Tyler Holland, Jaden Lambert, Shamar Reed, Nelson Rivera, Brandon Sweeting, Rick Van Hofwagen, and Melvin Upgard. It's been a pleasure coaching you boys this year. Yep. Congratulations. This way, guys. This way. Thank you. So now that we're going to we're going to turn our attention to the high school ranks, and our fall sports recognition of state champions is where we're going to start. And these are our FHSA, Florida High School Athletic Association, state champions. And the first team that we're going to recognize is the 4A state girls cross country team, and that is the team from Plant High School. Here to start the introductions is the assistant principal for administration, Ms. Lauren Otero. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Superintendent Davis. Thank you all for having us here this evening. I would like to introduce our girls cross country team state champions, but also academic team state champions in the FHSAA. Highest GPA in the state of Florida in the class 4A, uh, all the teams in the class 4A classification. Yes. In his 39th year as head girls cross country coach, Roy Harrison. As Roy's coming up, what is this, 12th? 12th state champion. I just want to know if he's changed his license plate to reflect that, because he generally does. 
I haven't changed it yet. I have to get another car. <laughs> um, I just want to thank a group of girls that have been so dedicated and have worked year round running up to seven miles a day in all kinds of weather and I'm so proud of them. Um, so I'm just going to introduce you. I know I have like a minute. So Junior, Mary Ellen Udaly. <laughs> Senior, Lily Fitzgerald. <laughs> Sophomore, Avery Hernandez. <laughs> Senior, Hartley Hill. <laughs> Junior, Maggie Malizia. Junior, Penny Markowski. And Junior, Arlie Rubin. We're missing uh, one more. Her name is Maddie Gear, and she is quarantined, <laughs> which is what we had to deal with all September, October, November. And I just want to thank these girls for working so hard. All right. We'll get in the Picture. Okay. Congratulations. Next, we're going to move to another fall sport, swimming. And the 2A state boys swimming individual champion in the 50 and the 100 free. Uh, it was from Chamberlain High School. Here to make an introduction is assistant principal, uh, Ms. Jean Smith. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'd like to introduce our head um, swim coach, Nicole Holman. Hi, I would like to introduce um, the 50 free, 100 free champion of the 2A district, Chance Tierheimer. Next, I'm going to reference and, and make the announcement of the 3A State Girls Swimming Individual Champion in the 200 Individual Medley. That's Michelle Morgan from Freedom High School. She was unable to be here this evening, but we would like to acknowledge her success. The 4A State Girls Swimming Individual Champion in the 50 Freestyle and the 100 Butterfly was from Steinbrenner High School. We have both Principal Tiffany Yule and Assistant Principal for Administration Dennis Durflinker to introduce uh, further. Unfortunately, our athlete couldn't be here tonight, but I am pleased to introduce her coach, um, Ms. Christy Udagawa. Well, Lexi isn't able to be here, but she uh, she did an awesome job. She won state record this year in the 50 freestyle, won the 100 butterfly, and also was the Hicks Award winner for Hillsborough County Female Swimmer of the Year. My guess is the two swimmers that aren't here is because they're in the pool somewhere. Now we're going to switch gears and go to some cheerleading, I believe. And in our winter sports, 
and the 2A state small co-ed cheerleading team from East Bay High School is that first team that we're going to announce as a state champion. And here to make some introductions is the principal, Ms. Amy Cox Stevens. Good evening. I'm a very proud principal this evening, and it's my honor to introduce assistant coach Megan Swanson and head coach Tracy Howard. You have the roster for me? Yes. You may do it by heart or not. I just wanted to test them out. Good evening. I just wanted to quickly say thank you to the school district for finding a way to bring some normalcy back into these kids' lives by allowing athletics this year. We're going to start with introductions. Nyjah Andrews. Janelle Blake. Tatiana Brown. Mariella Caballero. Carrie Folks, Madison Hamilton, Gage Johnston, Lauren Linenberger, Haley Obondo, Sydney Rivera, Phoebe Vildebill, Florida Vildebill, Aaron Vilmene, Elizabeth Weston, and Michael Williams. Y'all do that thing that y'all do with pitchers. I watch how fast this happens with cheerleaders. No, no, watch. They'll get. They'll figure it out very quickly. There it is, and even the bin. They created three roles very quickly. I think it's important for the record this is back to back, correct? Yeah. All right, we need to say that. Winning is hard, defending is even harder. Thank you all. Absolutely, congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, moving on in the 2A state small with tumbling division of cheerleading the state champions are from Sickles High School. Here to make some introductions, we have Principal Mary Freitas and Assistant Principal for Administration Greg Lewandowski. proud to present our two coaches, uh, Jen Beam and Gianna Richko. So we're going to go ahead and introduce our athletes uh, who won state champs for the fifth time this year. Uh, <laughs> Jay Dinesco, Dinesco, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Mia Hardwick. <laughs> Alyssa H. <laughs> Kate Munch. <laughs> Sydney Munch. <laughs> Sasha Payne. <laughs> and we also have uh, Dahlia Benninghoff. Uh, Jordy Desai, Peyton Fincham, Avery Geis, and who else? Sophie Works is not here, but they were on the team as well.
Congratulations. Thank you. How many in a row is that? Well, unfortunately, that one wasn't in a row, but we had four in a row. Four in a row before that? Yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You heard the last team. Uh, they were a... a state champion, and they actually have won their fifth title uh, in six years. And this next group, how many, ladies? Seven, Seven times in a row. So, so next up, the 2A state champion in a small division from Strawberry Crest, Strawberry Crest High School, here to make some introductions as principal, Ms. Christy Rayburn. Christy's a former and current runner, so come on. All right, so I'm going to introduce our coach. That's Vince Mealy, and he will introduce the ladies. All right, I was forced to say something before I introduced the girls. Um, <laughs> these trying times gave these athletes every opportunity and excuse to quit pushing, give up, and completely hang up their uniform with the hopes of 2022 bringing a little more normalcy, but that wasn't our athletes. <clears throat> our athletes are strong, attentive, persistent young women. No matter what obstacle or challenges were thrown at them, they had no quit. From division changes to schedule adjustments to the roster being reworked every single competition, they were always ready and willing to answer the call. And that's why I'm extremely proud to present to you the seven-time consecutive FHSAA cheerleading state champions. <clears throat> From varsity, our one-time state champions are Zoe Taylor, Hannah Watson, Hope Johnson, Sydney Gutierrez, Kaylee Ross, Sienna Smith, our two-time state champions is Julia Franti. Our two-time state champions and 2020 national champions are Lauren Abbey, Sarah Fable, Christina Seizer, Kira McClard, who's not here, Riley Blackman, Savannah Jenkins. Our three-time state champions and 2020 national champions are Heather Hines, Samaya Paris, Dakota Grigson, and Karis Dell. Y'all do a couple rolls for us, lady. Yeah, all right. Congratulations. Oh, one more. You got them all on, huh? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> How you doing? I have to wait for them to leave because all their, their jewelry is, is ringling. Okay. Our next team that we're going to present is our 7A uh, girls basketball team that is a state champion. That's the team from Plant High School. Here to start our introductions, uh, Assistant Principal for Administration, Ms. Lauren Otero. Thank you all again. I would like to introduce our 2021 Florida Dairy Farmers Coach of the Year, Carrie Mann, in her 19th year. <laughs> Good evening. This team is not only the 7A girls basketball state champions, but they are also our 7A academic award state champions, which means we also have the highest GPA. 
Not sure, but I, I just don't think that really happens very much. So proud of these girls. Thank you to our coaching staff and our administration for all their support. Um, and this team is absolutely the most incredible group of women that I will ever know. Uh, they embody all that is good and all that is pure in our world and the sacrifices that they have made for each other and the way that they care about each other is just incredible. I'm going to introduce the seniors first, Kendall Cheeseman, 7A Player of the Year, attending Vanderbilt University on a full ride scholarship. Nyla Jean, the best point guard in the state, attending Georgia State University on a full ride scholarship. And Annika Johnson, the most organized woman in the world, attending Mount Holyoke College. Junior Sylvia Farfante, Allie Logue, Lydia Lowry, Victoria Merriman, Emma Rich, Hayden Stern, and Dagny Johnson. Sophomores Kendra Dodd, Morgan Sieper, Tanner Strickland, and Julia Brago. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, they're a little taller than the rest. Miss <laughs> 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 Perez is coming around. How many were how many? How many were middle school champions for you? Uh oh. I think it's important to recognize four years ago there was a large group of this that were middle school champions as well. Yes, so, oh, yeah. and so. <laughs> Okay, good to see you again. Okay. Now we're going to switch to wrestling. And a, we had an individual win a, a weight class, the 113-pound weight class. This 2A state champion from Brandon High School. Here to make some introductions is our principal, Mr. Jeremy Klein. Good evening. As the proud principal of Brandon High School, it is my honor to introduce our head wrestling coach, Mr. Joe Cozart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the, the wrestler I brought to you today, thanks for having us, by the way. We really appreciate it. Best for last. Um, is the 122nd state champion for Brandon High School Wrestling. He is one of our captains this year. He led his team to the 49th year consecutively undefeated in Hillsborough County. He was 38-0. He had 20 pins. He only gave up one offensive point the entire season. Tyson Lane, Jr., 113-pound state champ, Brandon High School. So I have to use a sports analogy. I had a fumble. I skipped a couple. 
So I have a couple of swimmers. They're not with us, but I would like to at least uh, address and announce their success. So here we have two individual swimmers from Plant High School here to introduce and tell you a little bit about them is, uh, again, Assistant Principal for Administration, Ms. Lauren Otero. Thank you all. It's an honor to stand here so many times and share these accomplishments. The first swimmer is Ella Bathurst. She is our 4A state champion in both the 200 individual medley and the 100 yard breaststroke. She has a perfect 4.0 and will be swimming for the University of Virginia in the fall. Congratulations to Ella. Our next state uh, champion swimmer is Tommy Nagel. He is a state champion in the 100 yard breaststroke. He is our school's valid Victorian and will be swimming for the United States Air Force in the fall. So congratulations to Tommy. Thank you. Again, thank you for the opportunity. I want to just tell you that we did 234 presentations in 43 minutes. You all might want to tell Larry Plank about that. Thank you. Have a good night.